Hi there, it's Nicole McGuirk, and today for the Lawn Fawn May 2014 Inspiration Week, I'm focusing on the Life is Good stamp set and coordinating dies, which is this darling stamp set with all these beach themed images and the cute, adorable little crab. I'm stamping the images from the stamp set on some Tim Holtz watercolor paper. I'm using the smooth side of the watercolor paper. One side is more rough, like traditional what you think of with watercolor paper and the other side is a little bit smoother which makes it a little bit better for coloring so I am stamping the images with a black dye ink on the smooth side and then coloring in a little bit with some distress markers I use the tumbled glass distress marker here and then I'm dipping a paintbrush in some water this is a fairly fine tip paintbrush and just spreading that ink around from the distress marker. You can see that it watercolors really nicely. You just have to lay down a little bit of color and then you can smooth it out and spread it around with a little bit of water and a paintbrush. You could also use one of the paintbrushes where you can put the water actually in the pen or a paint pen type thing. I used Oh, I think it was right persimmon, persimmon for the seashell barn door for the flags I'm using mustard seed for this shell here and then I believe I used a little I want to say picked raspberry for the starfish uh, the exact color will be listed in the supply list both at the end of this or below this video on YouTube and on my blog post now I stamped the cute little sand landscape there and also the sand castle and I'm ready to color those in. I'm going to grab, oh I'm going to go ahead and stamp my crab first. Try to get all of the images that I'm going to be using stamped. The palm tree. Because I'm going to be die cutting all of these out, I don't need to worry about placement exactly, you can tell on here. I'm actually using festive berries for the crab and also a little fired brick. Kind of combine both of these. My fired brick marker looks like it might be a little bit dry. It's seen a better day. I probably need a new one of those gonna spread that around and you can just see what a great watercolor effect this gives just something a little different than maybe Copic marker coloring or colored pencils and Gamsol like I use quite a bit of just something fun and new I love the watercolor look so I thought it would be fun to try out my distress markers with watercoloring I'm using a little scattered straw and also wild honey for my sand castle and I will be using the same colors for the sand landscape there. I wanted to just have a couple of colors to give it a little more depth and dimension especially for a larger image like this. I think it helps give it a little bit more added interest. When I let all of the images dry naturally. I did not heat them up and I think that you get a much nicer, more natural watercolored look when you do this. The water, it did dry really quickly. You can see I really spread it around for the landscape. I'm going to be, it die cuts out so I wasn't too concerned with staying in the line below there since there isn't one. Same colors for the sand in the bucket. And then I'm using a little mowed lawn for the top of the palm tree. I'm just laying a bit of color down. You don't have to color in the whole thing. Little frayed burlap for the trunk of the palm tree. And then I will go ahead and spread around those colors. <coughs> Excuse me. Spread around the color with my paintbrush and water. And as those, the the uh, water dries, it does kind of help move it around. Now I am going to hit it just briefly with the water gun, uh, or water gun, with the heat gut tool there, just the paint bucket. I needed to lay down a little additional color. I It wasn't quite as dark as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and I hit it really quick 
and I also wanted to be able to color in the little shovel there with the festive berries and I was afraid that the water might migrate so I went ahead and hit it real quick to dry it so that I wouldn't have to worry about laying down additional color there with the both the uh, shovel and the handle on the bucket. I darkened the flags too. They weren't quite as dark as I wanted them to be so I darkened them with a little additional coloring and water. Now I'm grabbing all of the coordinating dies. I just love that this stamp set comes with or that you can get the dies that coordinate with this stamp set and it comes with so many so you can die cut all of the pieces. I've become a very lazy die cutter or d fussy cutter as it, as it may be. I don't really want to fussy cut all that much if I don't have to so I love when there's coordinating dies. Now for the background I'm taking another sheet of this Tim Holtz watercolor paper and a little bit of tumbled glass and a lot of water to make a very light sky on the background of this for my card. I'm drying it really quickly because I'm going to take the solid cloud images from the Lawn Fawn Into the Woods stamp set and stamp those with the tumbled glass distress ink. And then I'm going to take some water and kind of, I kind of got too much there, so I just dabbed up that water. I'm going to go over them. I'm going to grab a bigger paintbrush and I'm really going to kind of fade those out. I want them to be very subtle and I'm not going for a real nice neat look here. You can see. I'm taking the wave now from Life is Good and I'm stamping it with the Salty Ocean which is the perfect name for creating this little ocean beach scene. Stamping that with the Salty Ocean Distress Ink and then I'm going to take my water and paintbrush again and just kind of spread out that color. The Distress Ink reacts with the water so it will move. You can see here the, it really starts to move and I, I started out being kind of nice and neat about it and I ended up really kind of spreading it <laughs> with my larger paintbrush. I, and I did go back in. I didn't feel like that was enough of a difference after it started to dry. So I'm going to dab some of the Salty Ocean Distress ink on my craft mat, go in with my paintbrush, and add more color on top of that where I've stamped. I just want those that stamping that I did to be very, very subtle. It's not a, a really bold element on this card. So once that is all dried, I can go ahead and start putting my scene together. I'm using a little liquid adhesive and my quick stick tool to help position these smaller little pieces. I love that you can have, there's little flags for the sand castle. And I think now that you can see that the watercolor has dried, just the dimension, especially like on the sand castle and on the little crab there and on the top of the palm, the green part of the palm tree. I love that. While the glue is drying and holding all those little elements in place, I've used the Inka Dinka Doo powder tool to rub that across the top of my card so that the embossing powder for my greeting doesn't stick anywhere else. And I'm going to take some Versamark and the greeting Sorry I Was Crabby and stamp that on the top of my card. And you can see I stamped it in another color some other time and didn't get my stamp very clean. Luckily, I'm embossing with some darker embossing powder, so it won't matter. I'm using both some gold and some red, and I'll heat that up. Move a little, got a little embossing powder up there, maybe where it was still a bit wet. I love this greeting. I think it's perfect. I'm going to stamp the seagulls with some black ink now, just around the top of my card. I'll trim off any of that excess. I'm going to take up the Sakura black gel pen and just add some detail for the crab's eyes and the white opaque pen to add some little dots to his cheeks. The Wink of Stella glitter pen to add some glitter detail here and there. And then I'll go along the sand with the white opaque pen and just add some little dots as well to give the sand a little additional depth and dimension. This is a really flat card for as much as that's going on on the card. I love that because it's very easy to mail. 
I did go back in on my die cut then and add a little additional blue because I realized the little cutouts on the sand castle uh, were white and that kind of took away from the overall effect of the card. I will take that entire piece of watercolor paper now and just attach that to the front of a white card and my card is ready to be sent in the mail. Thanks for watching this video showcasing the Lawn Fawn Life is Good stamp set and coordinating dies. The products I used are listed below the video on YouTube. Thanks for watching and please be sure to subscribe for additional videos on card making and scrapbooking. We'll catch you next time.